path is here. Yes, Andrea. Andrea is going to share with us now. But you know what? Now I think we have to give them a moment because I've just directed them to take selfies. So, so give them a second here and then go ahead and get started. Y'all look great. Don't worry. Y'all look great. Okay, so is this, this is on. Okay. We're going to, uh, first I just want to say thank you to all of the volunteers, to Rebecca and her whole team. This is my first year to attend and also my first year to present. I have not presented our organization in a capacity like this, and this is really amazing. It's been so inspirational, and um, it's really touched my heart in so many ways. So my name is Andrea, and I am from Safer Path Family Violent Shelter. We are a local family violent shelter located here in Atascosa County. Um, if we could get the slides, that helps. So I'm going to talk about Safer Path and what we do for just a little bit. I could go on and on and on. I love this organization. Um, when I was in college over 10 years ago, uh, this was placed on my heart by God to show me what I was going to do. I did not know anything about domestic violence. I did not know anything about family violence shelters, but I knew that this is what I was going to have to do one day, and so he put me on pause. I was a stay-at-home mom for 10 years, and I learned about this organization, and I've been here for two years, and I'm just, I'm loving it. I love doing this work. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. I wasn't supposed to go on until two, so I'm kind of, I feel rushed out. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> So um, I also want to mention, too, we do have a table over here. Uh, we've got a lot of free resources, materials. Um, so if you want to go check it out, I have some pins, chapstick, hair ties, things like that. Uh, so we can go to the next slide. Um, okay, so that's our mission. And I won't read the slides to you. I feel like that's just kind of, I mean, you can read. But we are here for a reason. Um, before we were a family violence shelter for 26 years, we were at Escosa Family Crisis Center. Some of you who are uh, from the area may be familiar with that. Um, there was a great need in the community to actually have a residential shelter. Um, so basically that means before we opened up our doors, we were only able to provide non-residential services. And so when we provided the case management to our clients, which we still do, um, we just didn't have a place to hold them. We would have to put them in a hotel or drive them to nearby shelters. And so this was just a really great need that our community um, it needed to be met. So we were very proud to open our doors in March of 19. Um, <laughs> we started out trying to open during a government shutdown. And then our first full year open, we experienced a pandemic. So it's it's been really an interesting ride, um, but we remained open the entire time. We had to change the way we do things and the way we meet with our clients. Um, but we are just grateful and so, so thankful to just remain open. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Um, I just kind of told you about that. That's an actual picture of the shelter. It's a beautiful eight-bedroom, three-bath shelter. It has a quiet room. Um, all of our services are free and available to men, women, and children. Go to the next slide, please. This is a list of our services. Um, I would be happy to speak with you about any of these. So what our case managers do is if you do decide to become a client, um, we just wrap case management services around you. Everyone's story is different, um, though it all falls under domestic violence or sexual assault. We tailor those services to you and what fits your needs. Next slide. Um, this is a little some numbers. I'm not a big data person, um, but I had a lot of fun doing our annual report this year for our fiscal year for uh, 2020. Um, and these are just uh, some numbers of the idea of kind of what we do, and we should have that report coming out here um, next month. Um, this is kind of a breakdown of our team, um, advocates and case managers. We have uh, a team of five of those. Um, our shelter team, th that's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Our hotline is 24-7. Um, outreach, education, and prevention, that's what I do. Um, I love my job. I'd, be, I'd love to talk to anybody who's interested. Um, we offer, we really tried to get into schools, but, of course, with um, schools being 
limited on, on visitors, we're not able to do that. So the things that we're doing are virtual. We try to focus on teens and our youth, um, how they develop those healthy relationships. Um, we have an excellent board. If anybody's interested in volunteering or becoming a volunteer board member, just contact me. You can email me. Um, we do have our thrift store. That's a pretty popular thing that we get a lot of phone calls about. Uh, we accept donations, and we are also open for shopping. Um, and our transitional housing, that was huge for us. We got a $400,000 grant to further um, house our clients after they, they – because we don't want them to stay in shelter. That's not a permanent solution. That is just to get back on your feet, case manage with you, let you um, – you know, just figure out what your next, next steps are for you and your family. And so with the transitional housing grant, um, selected clients can actually have their rent paid for by, by this funding. Next one. And some events and fundraisers. This is, I kind of laughed when I made the slide because I was like, well, who knows what we can plan for. But this is typically what we would do. Uh, pulling for a safer path. It's a um, sporting clay shoot out at the Malik Buckhorn Ranch. It's beautiful. If you're a shooter, your husband's a shooter, you're interested, um, just let us know. And we'll hopefully be pushing that out on social media. Uh, Heartstrings for Hope. I know some of y'all have attended that. It's a lot of fun. Dinner, dancing, and auction. We try to hold that in September or May. I mean, I'm sorry, September or October. Um, virtual events, that's the thing now. Make sure you like us on Facebook. That's where I do all of our social media stuff and, and try to push out all of the information on there. And then I think next I have, I just have a fi little five-minute video um, to talk about a little bit about uh, dynamics of domestic violence and some survivor impact stories.
that's it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all so much. Um, if you have any questions, um, you, we just had an overhaul on our website. It's beautiful. It's new. Um, you can go to our website and shoot us a, a contact us message or find us on Facebook. And I check all those. So, <laughs> I, Andrew, before you leave, yes. I do have a question. We've already put you on the spot. Okay. Moved you up as a speaker. That's hard, right? Mm -hmm. Um, one of the questions I had, I noticed that you serve men and women. Yes. Do the guys stay there, or do you have a separate facility, or how does that work? So we do serve men also. Uh, they do stay in the same in the same shelter. Um, they it, We haven't run into it a lot, I'll put it that way. Uh, because we're new, I mean, we're, we're a baby shelter, we, we are navigating all of the, the different aspects and the different ways that we serve our different clients. Um, but we really haven't run into that a lot. And then another question I had is, do the children start receiving counseling right away? Do you all have a partner organization that you work with for so that? So we, we do outsource for that. We do have um, a counselor that works with us. Um, if you do decide to become a client, you get six free sessions, and then after that, it's at a discounted rate. Uh, we do not. We are looking to have a counselor on staff. We're looking for funding for that. Anybody has like some magical grant writing skills or wants to be a counselor with us, that would be awesome. Um, but we we do work. If somebody has um, a special talent like that that wants to volunteer their time, we before COVID we were looking for babysitters, and I mean our moms are. I mean they're trying to work too, and so if their kids are not in school or they can't afford childcare, uh, we were looking for many areas of help like that uh, but now with restrictions we're pretty limited on who can come to the shelter so beyond covid there could be volunteer roles as far yes. as i see we, you know don't you always wonder about the privacy you know can you go in can you serve so that's good to know yes and like i said things are different now with covid but actually right now we are looking for hotline volunteers um, it's kind of extensive because you would actually be answering the hotline calls I mean, just like everybody else, we're, a lot of our staff is out with COVID um, or working virtually or their kids got sick. Um, and it's hard to maintain. We still have to maintain that. Um, so it's 20 hours of training with me. Um, but again, we've tried to make a lot of that virtual. So it's, um, I've gathered some videos. You don't actually have to come in and do the training. You'd have to do a background check. And so what that would look like is um, just on an as-needed basis, if you wanted to answer, you'd have to come in um, to the shelter or to the administrative building. And we're actually at three locations. So um, I'm at our administrative building, which, if you're familiar with Pleasanton, is right across the street from the high school behind the cemetery. Um, and then our thrift store, of course, is on Main Street, and then the shelter undisclosed location. So. Okay, and how much time does a volunteer who does the hotline, is that one to two hours a week, or do they just kind of set their it's schedule? It's up to them. We are just so, if you wanted to volunteer, we are so thankful that you want to volunteer with us. Um, so it's at your pace, however you can do it, as quickly as you want, or as stretch it out as long. And, you know, we'll work around your schedule. Okay, and I've got one more okay. that I can think of. If you all have a question, just I'll give you a chance, too. Um, what can we do for the kids? Do y'all collect any items, you know? Do, do they get a teddy bear when they show up? Is there anything we could do um, for the kids that come to the shelter? So we do uh, a monthly needs list. Um, if any of you like us on Facebook, we have an Amazon wish list that we ask for things that month, and it's pretty reflective of what we're experiencing in that time. Winter time, you'll see we ask for a lot of socks and blankets, um, house shoes and things like that. Kids... Uh, baby products. We just last month we had babies in shelter, which it just, you know, and we we don't m make them do anything. If they come in and they just need one night and then they're out the next day, that is completely up to them. Um, it's our doors are still always open, um, but we have babies and we don't they don't have anything but the clothes on their back, and so we need diapers and baby wipes, and so that will be reflective on uh, the monthly needs list. Uh, sometime during when COVID hit, and just like your kids were at home, our kids were in shelter too with nothing for them to do. And so staff was like, we need games and we need sprinklers outside. And we, so we asked for that. And um, I see so many faces that I recognize, but we have some great volunteers who donate stuff. And so if you're interested in donating directly to our shelter clients, um, check out that monthly needs list. And it's so easy. You don't have to go to the store and buy it. Just click, 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 and it ships directly to us. Oh, that's awesome. Yes. I think the thing that was most impactful um, for me was the numbers. You know, like you were presenting mm -hmm. for your annual report, and we served, and I looked, and it was almost 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Like that's 10,000 people here where we are. And that just really got to me. So ladies, if her message has spoken to you today, I really encourage you and invite you to go to her table during lunch, um, sign up for volunteering, uh, sign up to bring supplies, whatever might be getting your heart, right? Pulling on your heart. So thank you again. Thank you thank so you. much thank for you so pre much. presenting. Thank you.